This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, June the 6th, 2019. It's D-Day. Today was one of the great turning points in World War II. Strategically, it gave the Allied powers a base of operations on mainland Europe. Historically, it proved the Allies could mount a huge international operation. But today is most often remembered and memorialized, not for the historic or strategic circumstances, but for those who died under what really were inhuman conditions in order to save the West from Adolf Hitler. It's the men who died on D-Day that makes D-Day so memorable. In 2019, U.S. President Donald Trump visited the U.K. for the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and he said, quote, They did not know if they would survive the hour. They did not know if they would grow old, but they knew that America had to prevail. The cause was this nation and the generations yet unborn, end quote. D-Day isn't really a time for reashing historical details. It's a day, perhaps more than any other, that we mourn those we lost, and we mourn the fact that they ever had to fight. It's a day in which we vow to ourselves to recognize what started that war, and we vow to ourselves to fight those causes as they arise in our own communities, in our own nations. It's tragic that young people are so quick to call everyone they disagree with a Nazi. It dilutes the horrors and the suffering of the people who died at the hands of German fascism. Even worse, it masks the developing intellectual fascism that's been growing in the West for the past 15 years under euphemisms like political correctness and social justice. As Rowan Atkinson wisely said in a debate in the UK about the dangers of, quote, hate speech, he argued the proper response to hate speech is not labels and limitations, it is, quote, more speech. Just as the proper response to people with whom we disagree or people whom we do not understand, the proper response isn't suppression, but discussion. Words now may well save lives later. At least let that be our prayer. Today is the feast of St. Norbert of Xanten, a.k.a. Norbert Gennep. Xanten is in modern-day Germany near the Rhine River. And Norbert was born there in A.D. 1075 or so to a fairly wealthy and connected family. He used those connections to get an appointment as chaplain to the Holy Roman Emperor Henry V. Despite his appointment, he wasn't ordained as a priest, only as a subdeacon. In fact, he was living a pretty cush life for the time and doing basically nothing. He even paid a local guy to fulfill his personal religious duties, up to and including taking care of his scheduled times of personal prayer. In short, Norbert was shaping up to be part of the problem and not the solution. Until one spring day in A.D. 1115, he was trotting along on his horse when a freak storm arose and the thunder caused the horse to throw Norbert off, very St. Paul-like. He almost died. And as he recovered, he had a deep change of heart. He retired from his appointment as chaplain to the emperor and set up shop at a monastery near Cologne to live a life of penance. He donated all of his properties to various monasteries and he got serious about making himself right with the Lord. He was ordained as a priest and tried to establish a new religious order, but he was too intense and three people died trying to keep up with his fasting and his personal penances. Eventually, the Pope Calixtus II asked Norbert to calm it down a little bit and set up a religious order in France using the rule of St. Augustine. And so the canons regular of Prémontré was born. Norbert ended up advising the new Holy Roman Emperor, but this time he did so from a place of holiness rather than sloth. And his whole story is wonderful to follow, full of twists and turns and unexpected holiness and fascinating moments. Definitely worth your time to look into. His most famous quotation is wonderful. It says, O priest, take care, lest what was said to Christ on the cross be said of you. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.